Welcome back to The David Pakman Show. You can support The David Pakman Show for free if you use Amazon.com for any shopping at all. Before you do your shopping, go to our website, davidpakman.com, and click on the black banner on the right side of the website. Then just do your shopping, check out, do your whole thing. 7% of your purchase will come back to The David Pakman Show. You can also become a David Pakman Show member, made possible in part by liberalbias.com. Some statistics do suggest that the economy is improving despite having a Democratic president, but the statistics themselves obviously have a liberal bias. Find out more at liberalbias.com. This one today, finally, Lewis, we have such a straightforward new member name to welcome. Mike Drew. Mike Drew is a new David Pakman Show member. What did he draw? It's great to have him aboard, and thank you to him and to every other David Pakman Show member that keeps the show going. There's a lot of Mikes, aren't there? A lot of Mikes, a lot of David, Davids, a lot of Roberts. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. And actually, interestingly enough, a lot of Cindy's and Cynthia's. Cindy and Cynthia are popular member names, too. Hmm. Fascinating. We covered how Aaron Swartz, Reddit co-founder, committed suicide in the middle of an investigation going on regarding the... Um, uh, to, I don't. I, I don't even know what word to, to to use. The obtaining, the procuring of a number of documents from JSTOR and MIT, which he then was being prosecuted for something that was no longer illegal. We've talked about the whole story, and I don't know that we need to rehash it. The news about this is that prosecutor Carmen Ortiz is now facing a congressional probe. The Justice Department is now getting a lot of pretty pointed inquiries from a congressional committee about attorney Carmen M. Ortiz's prosecution of Aaron Swartz, which is now bringing up a lot of questions about whether her judgment is being called into question here as she pursues other high-profile cases, uh, and there's going to be a probation department probe. I think this is a good thing. I mean, Natan, you were saying that it really seems like, like nothing unusual was going on, that Swartz wasn't being singled out. Isn't that what you said? Uh, I was just saying that that's something that I read. Um, it, Some people are saying that, in other seen. words. Yeah, I certainly won't jump to the conclusion and say that, for example, only because the same crime isn't always uh, prosecuted doesn't necessarily mean that they were singling him out unfairly, uh, but it could mean that, so it needs to be looked at. So the, the questions that the initial letter is asking are, <laughs> Did federal prosecutors go after Aaron Swartz because he opposed the uh, SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act? Was that a factor? How the, how do the charges and penalties against Swartz compare to their prosecution of other hackers, which is kind of getting at what Natan is saying, which is just if just not being the exact same situation doesn't necessarily mean he's being targeted, but it is a question here. What plea deals were offered to Swartz? Because typically you would have a plea deal offered and prosecution would continue if those are not accepted. Did they deliberately offer plea deals that weren't good such that he, nobody in their right mind would accept them to create a situation where they could continue the prosecution? I think these are good questions. And why did they replace the original July of 2011 indictment with another indictment in September of 2012 that pumped up the charges and left him facing decades in prison and a million dollar uh, fine, potentially? I think that these are good questions. I think it's good to find this out. And uh, hopefully we will get to the bottom of it. There's a lot of speculation about whether he was or wasn't being targeted. And that's really what this is going after. Right. Uh, my assumption is that uh, he was. You know what? Sometimes... Uh the prosecutor tries to make an example out of someone uh, of a certain status, of a certain, you know, fame. And uh, it seemed unfair. So hopefully, hopefully the right things happen. The reality is that the opinions about what happened here are on a really wide spectrum. On the one hand, there are people who say these were trumped up charges and Aaron Swartz was bullied to death by the government. The other side of it would be this is an individual who was already predisposed to uh, to to take his own life and that the entire accusation that this in any way had anything to do with the government, that the government did anything wrong is completely made up. The reality is probably somewhere in the middle. The question is, which side is it closer to? Right, Natan? I think that that's that's realistically what we're looking at here. Yeah. And I don't want to. Um be on the wrong side of the argument or history, but, but sometimes what happens is prosecutors will directly or indirectly threaten uh, the defendant with like much worse jail time or penalties than is reasonable or, or that is likely to happen. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes people, but you know, honestly, that's not that great of an argument because presumably Aaron Schwartz had a lawyer and the lawyer would have told him what the deal was. Right. So, I mean, I think it remains to be seen.